Hi, this is the Grow Boss, and I was just trying to get my equipment to work properly. Ha! You think I'd be getting better at this doing it show six in week three? But there's always a problem, and you can see this little camera right here. I can't seem to get it to work. So we'll probably end up going straight to a phone call. But I've got some, uh, I've got some interesting things to show you today. So this is my pile of used equipment, and I'm gonna go over today what I paid for those things and what your used equipment is worth because you guys come to my store and you guys, I mean, I know you bought the ballast at $150 or $180, but frankly, when it comes into my store, I'm only going to be able to sell it for 75. So I thought we would go over a couple of things today about the prices that you're going to sell your used equipment for and the prices that you're going to buy it for. I'm the Grow Boss, and you're on Cannabis Hotline. What can I do for you? Hey, Grow Boss, my wife and I would like to say thank you very much for your book. Oh, excellent. You got my copy of my book. They'll make this phone call much easier. Well, maybe. We will see about that. <laughs> we'll try to make it easy for you. It only took three months to get your copy, and it cost us 70 bucks because we're up here in Canada. So it was kind of a painful experience. Anyway, oh, yeah. we just finished our first grow. Yeah, yeah, but it wasn't. I mean, let's um, just be clear. Up, uh, but let's just be clear, though, because you led with that. The book is twenty. Shipping to Canada is twenty nine. And while I don't control the shipping charges, yeah. I charge twenty dollars for my book. And frankly, there's books out there that are four and five hundred dollars that still don't give you the information that you need. And there are books that are thirty years old because I've read them all. And those thirty year old books, like the Bible, they have nothing to do with what we do. So, for $70, let's stop right now and let's both admit you got an extraordinary deal because I'm willing to admit that. Well, I'd have to agree with you because we just finished our first grow and it more than paid for my entire op. Sweet. That was what I wanted to hear. That $70 lead-in was a bit brutal. So, yes. So, now you got me on the phone. I've seen that you tried to call before, but this was the first time I was able to get to your call. So, what can I do for you? Okay, so I'm having some problems because um, we set up a three-light rotation, and I'm using those general hydroponic power grower drip systems. And what are you I'm doing? having a problem wait, wait, trying wait, wait, to wait, wait. What system? What system are you uh, using? The general hydroponic, the power grower. Power grower. Okay. Go it's on. It's a three-gallon drip bucket system with the ring. Okay. Got it. Um, yeah, so in, um, I've been trying to cut down from the 24-7, but the problem that I'm having is anytime I try to decrease it, within a couple of days, I start seeing some root rot around the edges of my plants, around the roots. So what should I be doing here? Like, I'm still new, so there's only a few things that I want to try changing at any given point in time. Uh, we just pulled our first plant two weeks ago. Uh, my second plant here is about 14 days from being pulled. In fact, I was just sitting here pulling off the fucking yellow fan leaves when you started streaming again. Yeah, that's the system right there. Okay. So when you the say when you say twenty four seven, are you talking about water or the light? Oh, the water. The water. Yeah. Okay. No, my veg tent runs eighteen six, and my flower <laughs> tents run on opposite schedule for twelve twelve. Okay, so let's talk about but the water is running twenty four seven. Okay, so tell me again, you've switched your water from 24-7 to what are you doing now? Yeah. Okay, so first I tried, uh, I knocked it down to 15 minutes every hour, um, and I started getting a little bit of algae, so I tried decreasing it more, and we worked all the way down to 15 minutes on, four hours off. Um, but the more time that the water was off, the more browning and root rot that I was getting <coughs> in the root system. Okay, let's start with the talk about the algae. Where was the algae that you were getting? Was it on top? Yeah, yeah, it was right up on the top, and I think I fixed that. We just started covering the top of the media, the uh, clay pebbles here, uh, with a black bag. We just put a slit down a black bag and covered the top of that so the light wouldn't hit the moisture. When you say a black bag, did you cover the whole container? Or did you just kind of lay it over the top of the rock? Oh, just over the top. Okay, so you could still, the bucket could still breathe. 
the air could move in and out of the bucket. Oh, yes, yes. <clears throat> yep. Okay. You ha there's a drip tube on the side, and you have them all hooked up in a circle, so the water is being circulated at the bottom, right? Um, well, the air tube comes in, it goes down to the bottom, pushes water up through the ring, and then it dribbles down through the pebbles from there, circling the base of the plant. Okay. Okay, I think maybe I moved too far with that last question. Let's uh, take a look at this from how many buckets do you have on this system? Uh, four. And One for whatever's coming up, one for my veg, and one for each tent, or each flower tent. Ah, so these are individual buckets. They're not like the picture yeah. that I'm yeah. the picture that I'm going to pop up right now is like five buckets in a ring. So here, yeah, one, no, two, I three, didn't buy the bucket. Okay. Or the eighth bucket. Okay, so part of the problem can be when you run the buckets individually, is that you tend to have to keep more water in the bottom. So usually, what happens is, yeah. You put the, all the buckets in a ring, you'll put this much water in the bottom, and then that water will circulate like this, and then all of the rings will circulate like this. So while the water's going top to bottom in the same bucket, all the water in the buckets is circulating through them, and through this one thing here, right here, which is the, which is the, which is the reservoir controller. So this main, this main yeah. item here picks up the water from all these buckets and goes back in. Now, a couple of things happen with air stones before you even tell me whether you're using one or not. A lot of people talk about how they put air stones into their res, but the reality is air doesn't dissolve into the water. For instance, I'll, I'll give you an example. If you were a thousand feet underwater, you were a scuba diver and you breathed out what would your bubbles look like? Oh, that's a good question. I think I've heard you say ask this before. They would be tiny. Wouldn't they be like really small? Yeah, yeah they'd, they'd be, be really tiny. small. Yeah, you're a thousand feet bubble. underwater. Yeah. Right. Now, when that same bubble gets to the surface, how big is it? It's big. And that's because there's well, less pressure. Well, it'd be pressure. much bigger. Right. So how come you didn't tell me that the air got dissolved into the water? And it's because air doesn't get dissolved into the water. That's not, how, that's not how the exchange happens. The exchange happens when the air comes up to the surface. It's called upwelling. And the upwelling works just like your lungs. It releases CO2 to the atmosphere, and it takes on O2, depending on temperature and pressure. It depends on the relationship. So in your particular case, <clears throat> One of the things that happens with mold and mildew is if you bubble air into the water, it turns out that it wildly changes the pH with huge oxygen swings. So let me ask, do you have an air stone in the bucket? Oh, no. No, I did not want to mess with the pH. Okay. To be honest with you, I stopped even monitoring my pH a little while about two months ago because it just was turning into being a whole lot of work. Okay, tell me a little bit more about the shape of the plant. Is it a big, wide plant? Are you getting the growth that you're supposed to? Um, well, I'm growing with a light that you don't like. I got myself one of those Mars 2 400. It draws 185 watts at the wall. And our first plant dried was 6 ounces, 10 grams. So I was kind of pissed because I was like 7 grams away from 1 gram per watt. Um, but in my first one, I made a four by four trellis and out of the 16 squares, I got 12 really good colas, two mediocre ones and a little bit of popcorn and where the other two holes should have been. But it was only about four feet tall in total, I'd say. Uh, my second one here, well, the one, the tallest cola here hit the fucking light on me. So you got to watch that canopy. Um, okay, one of, the yeah. th one of the things that you're going to have to pay attention to will be the pH. You might very well be getting wild pH swings. pH swings can happen okay. for no other reason than when the plant wants a certain ion. If it, if, it, if it can't pick it up, it will release 
ions that stretch the root's reach. So it will be root, it will release an ion to achieve the molecule that it wants and it will increase its draw and it will be able to pull the molecules, the ions from further away. That's usually a media thing. In hydro, you don't usually have to worry about it. But you do have to be concerned with something called pH dumping and that's when it changes drastically and you might start to get that slime. Yeah. What's the temperature of the water? Okay. Uh, well, I'm in Canada, so it generally ranges between 18.5 and 20.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, what's that, like 4,000 degrees? All right, let me see. Yeah. Uh, convert 4,000 Kelvin, convert Celsius, convert Celsius. Okay, so you said Celsius, it was what, 2117? What'd you say it was? 18.5 to 20.6. 18. So you're in the 60, and if we do 20, so you're in the 64 to 68 range. So that would tend to not promote algae because algae tends to show up when it's warm. It's a tough thing. Now, I'm okay. going to give you 100% credit that your plants are growing fine, and that's not the problem that your light's too close, you're overwatering, you're overfeeding. How do the roots look? They root, the roots look before the pH dump. Are they bright white and bushy tailed? What do they look like? Oh, yes. Huge, huge, bright white mass, lots of little hairs off of them. I love my root systems. Okay. So you're going to have to do a couple of experiments. One of the experiments that you're going to have to do is if you turn the water off for four hours, you don't particularly have to worry about not enough oxygen because as the water goes back up to the top of the system, um, as the water goes back up to the top of the system and it falls down over the, that's definitely not, you said it was a GH what power, what, what system are you in? 4830, 4830. Perfect. So here, so when the water falls over the top of the rock, that's where it picks up the oxygen. When the roots are in yeah. the air, they don't usually slime up because you don't usually have that problem when it comes to aeroponics, where the roots live in the air and they get water splashed on them. So you yeah. are going to have to come up with a couple of experiments to, to solve this problem. One of the experiments is going to be, you're going to have to put an air stone in that bucket. And maybe the air stone is going to be the thing that keeps the algae down. The other thing that you can work with okay. is peroxide. Now, both the air stone, peroxide, and enzymes, like a product called Hygrozyme. It's, uh, it's pretty familiar if, you, uh, if you're if you growing. It's one of the more popular products. Now, these things, okay. these, these things are... Similar system to the one you have. And you 
you can see right there, right in the middle part, when you're like right here, that's the canopy, that's the real canopy that you're looking for. And the reason that you get such a wide canopy like that is because there's so much oxygen up in there. And that's the benefit of systems like hydro systems like geocycle or being on a flood table or BWC. Um, those are the things that you're looking for. So you getting the risk. And what I'm getting the risk, you have a small, a small amount of experimentation to do. And they're going to come and find the home, the watering schedule. And I believe you are right with about 15 minutes every four hours because if there's enough left, it could hold the moisture. Now, if you just see one plant and it's yeah. five times bigger, you might be 15 minutes every two hours. And that seemed to be a little bit jogging of what you had said, that you have less problems when you are watering a little more frequently. And so, you know, from here, I mean, you know, from here not being at your garden and not having any pictures to look at, there's only so close I can get to it. There's only so far in a plant I can take it. And I think that you're in that position where you might have to take close enough because I can get you started, but until I see the pictures and I go through all the details, you're going to have a couple decisions to make. One of the decisions to make is going to be yeah. are you going to do nitrate to help protect and grow the roots? Or are you going to do things like peroxide and hydrozone to eat the slime away? Now, it's always a trade-off. Because if everything's going good, you might want to try protecting your roots first. Now, I say aircraft, they're hydro, but you may find that the powder, that the powder, great white, sticks better because, because it just sticks to the roots better. Anything might work for you, great white might work for you, but both of these things live on, survive, to, and protect the roots because the roots provide the microbes, the sugar they need to live, and the microbes convert the nutrients into something the plants can use, and it saves them energy. The microbes protect the roots in, in a way that, that hydrogen peroxide and enzymes do not. These are like chemical peels to your roots. Your roots are like synthetic serum and endoderm. They help rebuild, recondition, and grow new roots that are more resistant. But you are in a little position here because you're going to have some experimenting to do. Like you're going to have to take closer notes and go from there. What nutrient are you using? Um, I'm actually using the general hydroponics line. So I use the three-part flora series, the Calimag, the Liquid Cool Blue, Nectar, Armor C. And for the microbes, I've been using the subculture M and the subculture B. Are you thinking I should stop using those and go with the great white microbes? The problem I don't, the problem I have with the general hydroponics, especially subculture M, is it really makes the water very dirty, like very, very dark. And I find it very difficult at that point a good idea as to what my roots really look like because they're always brown. And I don't have an air stone, so I have no way to stir them up. They all just kind of settle down into the bottom of the bucket. Thank you. 
it's in a liquid, the microbe will have the nation be based on the concentration and once you dilute it into the water, the microbe disappears. So yes, I would say put the microbe just because I have so much success with this. Um, I mean I like you do you appreciate the work like I like the name of the body of you but I don't even say they should put <laughs> Yeah, the problem that I'm, the biggest problem I have with GH right now is that the pro, their products are starting to contradict themselves. Like I was using the Armor C to add the silica, right? And then I was just watching one of their videos the other day where they're like, um, they're telling you you should also be using subculture M, but then a video later they're like, oh yeah, but the, uh, what is it in the Armor C? The potassium silicate um, destroys the microbes. So what's the point to adding both? Of their products to your reservoir if they're going to destroy each other. Where did you hear that silica destroys uh, the uh, microbes? General Hydroponics on YouTube has a video. It's a uh, uh, tall, skinny guy. He's got really glassy, glossed over eyes. <laughs> okay. So General Hydroponics is telling you that their silica kills their microbes. No, no, no. What they said, I was watching the videos for the different products, right? So I was watching the one for Armorsy, and they were all like, oh, yeah, you should add that. And then when I was watching the one for Subculture M, they mentioned that potassium silicate destroys microbes. Or was it the silicon dioxide? It was one of the two things oh, in so armor. Okay. So, so I was like, well, why am I adding one to destroy the other? I'm just kind of lighting money on fire, I guess, with all these fucking nutrients. Pardon my language. Okay. So I'm going to show you something interesting. And um, it is right here. See where the chemical, see where it says the chemical here is, uh, let's see. K2, let me see, let me get that on the screen. K2. Okay, so, um, interestingly enough, do you know what hydrogen peroxide is? Yeah, but you know what hydrogen peroxide is? It's, it's, what is it? Peroxide, so it's HO3, it's hydrogen, it's like HO3. It's an oxidizer. Anything that's an oxidizer, an O3, that's like an ozone molecule. So I would definitely have to say that if you put in oxide or a hygrozyme, remember I said hydrogen peroxide, or an enzyme yeah. like hygrozyme, you're going to kill your microbes. Now, what you don't, what you have here with this chemical formula is potassium, O3, and silica. Essentially, what you have is... Um, Okay, so Equilibrium from Humboldt Nutrients has their, so potassium is a K, so their soluble potash, which is potassium, is K2O5. So they get their, pota they get their potassium from K2, just like these guys do. Um, in terms of silica, I don't think it's the silica that's going to kill the microbes. I believe it's going to be the oxide. I don't believe it's the potassium because, well, if you look at anything that has potassium in it, all of a sudden, like we're at like, uh, um, let's see, we're at like what, like uh, liquid, liquid cool bloom from GH. This is a 1010. I'm assuming that this is probably potassium oxide to get the potassium or you know k2o5 just like anything else so i think really that we can isolate the potassium as not being the problem because here's a situation where we're looking at potassium and then i don't think it's the silica because clearly silica is inert it's not even it doesn't even get picked up on ppms although it does change ph but ph isn't what you yeah. said kills the microbes so 
I mean, if I'm going to go back to my basic science class, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have to pick the oxide here that has, um, oh, even in the formula K2 silica oxide O3. So I'm going to have to say that it's the oxide that's going to kill them. Now, we're left with a couple of choices. The choice is you're having root problems. If the oxide kills the microbes, or just the GH armor, whatever is in it, kills the microbes, you have a choice. You stop using the silica and let the microbes do their thing, or do you continue to use more, more hydro, hydrozyme, or do you continue to use more peroxide, or do you remove the silica and increase the, increase the microbes? Now, in terms of what things do, silica thickens the cell walls, which in turn protects against bugs. Have you had any bug problems? No. Okay. So no bug problems. You have a healthy plant. And one of the things that I always tell you guys is a healthy plant does not get attacked by bugs. Why? Because bugs only attack sick, health, sick plants. If bugs could attack healthy plants, they would eat the rainforest. There would be no checks and balances. So the two benefits that you get from silica which would be more weight and thicker cell wall and um, more systemic resistance. I mean, you got the weight you were supposed to. So maybe perhaps I would experiment with no silica and more microbes and see if the yeah. microbes were able to protect the roots. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's tough for me. There's a couple of different kinds of phone calls that I get. One of the phone calls is where I have to tell you, why is your light so close? Another phone call I have to tell you is, why are you watering every day? And another phone call I have to tell you is, this may not be the hobby for you. And then occasionally I get a call like you, where I have to say that there are, that the key for you is something much smaller and more minute and may require more finesse than something as easy as me saying, ah, oh, ha, ha, raise your light. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I keep really good notes of what I'm doing, so I keep, uh, I did get your garden tracker. I don't use your garden tracker, but I took all the things that I like out of it, and I made my own spreadsheet, so, but I monitor my plants every day, everything that happens to them, so <laughs> I'm thinking in the next I love couple it. of plants, if I do a little more research, I'll probably just pin this down. Yeah, you're getting the yield you're supposed to, now or damn close to it. Now you just have to work out the details. And notice the details don't involve changing nutrients. The details don't involve switching lights or systems, because in your case and in this particular time, all you have to do is uh, finesse your system a little. All right, I'm the grow boss. We're going to do a little bit of uh, used equipment today. Let me get this guy on a call right now. Hey, you're on with the grow boss. What can I do for you? Uh, yeah, my question was, and uh, this is Ralph from Maine, and I want to thank you for what you're doing. Hey, Ralph. How you doing? I'm doing good, Ralph. Thank uh, you. My, uh, my, qu my question is, I'm kind of weird fella. I miss the old Mexican brown weed with seeds in it. I oh, got a uh, border we weed. We can grow up. I love it. Yeah, border weed, but I don't. I remember, don't like the news. I don't remember border weed for the seeds, although my border weed did have it. What I remember the border weed for is it smells like my. It smells like piss, right? It smells like piss because that's how they get it across the border. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I love the flavor of it. It's, I don't think it tastes like piss, but maybe you have a different border anyway, in Michigan question... than I do. In... <laughs> well, you know, I'm talking back in the seventies and in the sixties out of Rhode Island, oh, the yeah. stuff we used to get had was loaded with seeds and, and I really liked it. I cleaned the seeds out. I even liked the flavor of the hulls, you know, the little, the little uh, uh, casing that the seeds come in. I think it's got a great flavor. And I think everything I've tried new in the last 15 years, it all tastes very metally, or tastes citrusy, and all this other stuff that I'm really not into. So I got some old seeds. I got a few old seeds. 
I bought some Pro Mix. I'm trying to start them. I can grow them outside legally. I think we can have six plants here. My question is, without too much fuss, I got some worm poop and I got some bat poop, um, and I'm I just naturally let them go. Um, my question is, how did the Mexicans get the weed to turn brown without losing the potency of the THC? Um. Okay, and with that, I think I can probably take that call off the air. And I remember borderweed, and I remember it being brown, and sometimes I remember it being orange, but I think mostly it was about the hairs that were on it. And you got to remember how the Mexicans grow it. I mean, sorry, you got to remember how, I don't even know what the PC for that is. So you got to remember how the Mexicans grow it. It was in large fields with cheap labor. And cheap labor in large fields tends to, tends to focus on quantity, not quality. And so for their perspective, they didn't even remove the males. I mean, they didn't even remove the males from their garden. Why? Because you get cheap labor and you go for quantity and not quality. They don't care what's in the bud. I remember getting rocks and all sorts of shit in that bud. And so um, in terms of that, Oh, God, I remember 1984 Indica. I remember going home with like an eighth of $50 Indica in my pocket. And I'd come in the house and I was like 15. And my mom would be like, you stink. Go take a shower. And I would giggle to myself because I had, you know, an eighth of bud in my pocket. And it smelled like skunk, which was, you know, like 15-year-old boy B.O. Okay, that's about the best I can offer you, Ralph, from Michigan, in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, what's important. However, um, I thought today, and I hope my mic picks this up, I thought today I would go over a little, because we got a bunch of used stuff in. So I thought I would go over a little on what we paid for some of this stuff, because because if you come in my store and you try to buy these new from me, I mean, new in a box, if you bought two, I might give them to you one thirty each. And these are super-sized hoods, right, with the glass, 8-inch bench, hinged. And you always loved hinged, you always loved hinged hoods because in this particular case, you can drop the glass down and clean it off, and the glass does get dirty. I mean, I got, this guy spent $309 on a soulless tech ballast. $309. It came with the receipt. It was never fired. I got it for $25. Why? Because I had to buy all the other shit to get it. Like, I got these hoods for $10 each. I'll literally sell you a magnetic bulb, a magnetic ballast, a bulb, and a wing hood for $100. And that's pretty inexpensive. Now, they get hot. But I would have sold you that for 100 bucks. I mean, I got this one with the glass for 15. I got this six inch can, I got this six inch can fan for 25 bucks. Of course, I had to buy a lot of equipment to get this in the price, but I mean, that's like a 150 some dollar new item. You know, something like that. It's a huge deal to get, you know, when you go out and buy a new fan, the thing is, though, I've got like, you know, the guy looks at me and he goes, hey, you've got, uh, you know, I spent $150 on that. Or you look at me and you say, I spent, you know, $300 on a ballast. And I look at you and I go, yeah, but I already have, you know, three more of these things and an 8-inch. I'll sell them to you. I have my Craigslist for 80 bucks. Why? Because I can't get rid of them as fast as they come in. I mean, you want to you want to know why I give you guys twenty dollars or twenty five dollars for a digital dimmable ballast? It's because I got eight of them already, and the only way I can sell them is to like people in my store or on Craigslist. You know what I mean? Like I I'm a buyer, and this is Vegas, and in Vegas it's hot. It's hot during the summer, so we have a saying here at my store: we buy all summer, sell all winter. That's funny because they're so cheap. Like I bought these magnetics for $10. It's like selling a boat in winter. It's worth half of what it is you're gonna get in summer. So I get these thousand watt switchables. 
for literally 10 bucks. I get the wings for like five bucks. I get the bulbs used, like Portalux and Ushio bulbs used for a couple of bucks. But I gotta sit on them for a while, so I sell these things for like $100. But that's just some of the product, right? Like, there's more ballasts. There's more ballast back there. There's more ballast back there. I mean, you end up with these, oh my God. Oh. These icebox coolers, ah, oh, they've been sitting around forever. I, I, who's going to buy one of these things? I literally paid $10 for them. You can have them for 20 if you come to my store. But the thing is, this is because, uh, you know, so many people fail with this equipment because it's super hot, it's too bright. I mean, if you do the math, if this hood is 2 by 3 and you put a thousand watts in it, that's a thousand watts spread over six square feet. But if you put a thousand watts in a little tiny hood like this, it's two by two, it's four square feet. That means your light is 30% brighter for the same area. That's a big deal. And that's why people have such a problem with the failure rates when they grow with these lights because they're so hot. What I would like to point out is there are no four foot eight bulb T5s in there. There are no four bulb T5s in there. You can see I've got a couple of four, two foot four bulbs. I don't know really what you would use them for. They came in with a bunch of other shit and I'll sell them. But I don't really know what you would use them for. All I'm telling you guys is that when you go out to buy your systems, if you know what you want, I've got a light rail here used. Works just fine, 125 bucks, right? I mean, power cord, this is a 4.0 actually because it has the detachable cord and it lets you control both the speed and the delay. So, I mean, there are some really good deals to be had. I mean, I got these LEDs, I think I paid 15 bucks each. I'll probably get 75, 80 bucks for them. The weird thing is always these little 150 and these 250 watt lights, the one where the ballast is built in. Now this is something you would stick in a closet, but at 150 watts, I mean, you're, only, you're gonna get one little plant and very little yield, and so usually, Usually when I get like the 19 year old that comes in with a budget and he's only got like a limited amount of money for this uh, He'll be like, oh, I'm growing under my bed. I'm growing in a closet where my parents can't find me And so we'll sell him something like this You know, we probably have bought and sold this one We have another one too We probably bought and sold them four or five times over the last couple of years why? Because, uh, because they always seem to come back to me because they're inappropriate for grow. That's why you don't see any T5 four foot eight bulbs. And that's why when like we go to Craigslist and we look at stuff that's on Craigslist, um, um, let's say we'll do, uh, we'll do grow equipment. Oh, I'm in Las Vegas, 400 acres in California. That's a nice house. That's not. So let's do, uh, let's do a uh, grow tent. Oh, that's because I'm in housing. Let's go to uh, all housing for sale grow tent. Okay. First, try to stay off the nutrient thing when you're buying on Craigslist. Um, you just once you have an open bottle like I won't even buy an open bottle for my store just because but I'll tell you there are a lot of great deals on Craigslist like here's one here's two tents oh that's perfect for a veg flower setup they're both four feet long but they're 450 bucks although it does come with tents oh hydro yeah that's a big failure rate and oh and no oh, they got two of those fans for a little bit and they got one of those little ones they got listen when i tell you guys to do this you put the two tents you put one fan filter and you branch it off i mean this guy just spent what 125 and 100 150 and 125 for each of those fans oh there's a third one right here oh yeah brilliant so this guy's got 350 dollars fans yeah 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 you can already tell it's a brilliant move um okay so we don't get an idea, do we get an idea of, of the lighting required? No, oh, 600 watt bulb. 
There's one of those I <laughs> I just showed you in my pile of used shit. This is one of those ones where the ballast is included in the hood. And here's his 600 watt ballast. It looks like maybe this is another ballast or something. Look, all I'm suggesting is that when you see a hodgepodge of shit, that you should expect it came from a hodgepodge grower. Like if you bought these two tents from me, I would have something similar to this for 90 and 135. So you would be at uh, 225. Um, you would need one fan that I sold you for 80 bucks that uh, used six inch used four inch So 80 bucks makes that uh, puts us at 305 um, You're gonna get a bag of ducting from me. That'll put you at 335 um, I don't know about the rest of the fan. I didn't see a filter, but you'll need a filter 120 bucks. So you're at 450 I mean that's brand new tents you bag of soil is 20 bucks so you're at 470 a couple of buckets you're at 480 so for what this guy has for 450 used and in pieces i mean yeah that uh yeah and then if you buy a couple of uh lights for them if you you would probably want to buy t5 so that would add 350 and you would have you'd be at about 800 bucks for not just not just new because i don't particularly care about that but you would be at 800 bucks for the right equipment like these two things are would be great oh i see this is a t5 below it you can tell by the light hangers right there okay so that's one of those four two foot four bulb t5s that i just showed you and uh yeah so there's that yeah so six lights i mean is that a hood one 400 watt power supply so I, it, I don't even know that they're being sold as one lot. Okay. What I'm suggesting is, is if you buy equipment, Ooh, that looks like a good deal. I'd buy that. Um, how big is it? 50 by 50 long by 50 wide. So that's 48 by 48. So it's four square small cuts on roof as seen in photo. Oh, I see little tears in the corner there. Okay three vents on the bottom several ducting wire all metal bars heavy duty yeah 65 bucks that's a pretty good deal for that tent i think it's the i think it'll work for a t5 for you too so if you know what you're looking for oh yeah what's this an led a street light uh if you know what you're looking for oh so here's 695 now you would never grow four plants in that small a space we've been over that week after week after week you have an LED and you have no veg. I mean, you have no, you only have one light. So here for $700, seven fucking hundred dollars, it comes with dick. It has nothing to do. Not only can you not grow a pot plant in a two by two square, it's not worth it. And you can only grow one. They just don't fit. I mean, I show you guys the videos all the time where, uh, where I show you guys my videos all the time where, where a plant that veges for four weeks, even just one, veges for four weeks and flowers for um, eight weeks is going to be, that's a 12 week long plant. If you have a, if you're gonna grow a plant for 12 weeks, I mean, you're gonna get a big fucking plant. I mean, you're gonna get a plant so big that it looks like this when you put it in your tent. I mean, you can't put a plant this big into your tent, right? It doesn't fit. I mean, it runs up into the light. So, I mean, here's something where you think you're going to get a deal on it. And then, because you have no idea what's going on, how are you going to put this plant? This is a two by four tent, by the way. And I trellis this one plant down to this one plant. I mean, how are you going to take that one plant that I trellis like that and stick four plants next to each other like that? Remember, that was why I was giving away shirts because of this nonsense. So all I'm suggesting is here's another problem on Craigslist because they didn't have that kind of success. Oh, a 20 by 9 tent. Oh, it's a gorilla. I bet that's $4 million dollars. Okay, grow tents, brand new, two by four, four by four. So, oh, that's my ad. Ha ha ha. That's my ad right there. Yeah. 
Um, let's see. So Ushio bulbs, that's me. Um, Happy Frog, fifty bag, seven hundred bucks. Indoor grow equipment. Let's see what indoor grow equipment we can buy for a thousand. Wow! Oh, dude, take a look at this hood. That is, that is. I think I probably sold this to this guy. This is a low rise hood. And if you notice, uh, um, uh, if you notice right uh, here on this hood and all these hoods, see how round that is? Okay. When you come back here and we look at the, when we look at this picture, notice how flat it is right here. And what you do is you sort of flatten the ducting around it, but this is a low rise hood. But in all cases, I want you to understand that these plants are dead for several reasons. One, they've been overwatered. This one right here is the most evident of overwatered. You can tell because this one here is bean stalked. You can see how it's not nearly as bushy here as this example is right here see how nice and bushy that is right there and then we come back here and yeah it's got some tops but they are failing to thrive and you can see how tight the nodes are packed together it's neither bushing out nor growing vigorously because these ones here are chicken clawed and hanging down it makes me think over water. It could still be too much light because I'm not in close enough to see that picture. But when I see this branch right, this top right here, beanstalk, remember how I said earlier in the show that we're talking about the difference between oxygen at the roots and the more oxygen at the roots, the bigger the bush you're going to get lower down, the more branches per inch you're going to get. Well, here's an example. So yeah. Oh, here's a little fan right here, a little six inch fan. That's a silly little fan for blowing the air around. Let's see what they got. Oh, it's a thousand watt. Um, oh, dude, I think this is the system I may have just bought from that guy yesterday. I think he sold some, but there's that Solatex ballast. So he's got a five by five tent. My observation is always, if a thousand watt belongs in a five by five tent, a thousand it does it grows five by five two feet deep worth of canopy if you have five by five one foot worth of canopy you might put your thousand watt light like four feet away five feet away and then when the canopy gets one foot taller your light will be four feet away a little bit closer this guy's got his thousand watt light hugging the plants i mean it's all over them even if it was dimmed it's obviously still too much light. Just look at the reflection on the bottom. Now, plants do not, ref do not photosynthesize any light from the bottom of their leaves. So the question is always, why are you throwing that much light at the floor? I mean, look at how bright that is. Look at how much light this guy is throwing on the fl at the floor. Listen, that light should be at 400 watts and it should probably be five feet away. Water pump, air pump, too. Oh yeah, two six can fans, a three inch can fan. I don't know about that, but maybe this little something right there. But yeah, I think I, uh, oh yeah, it is that guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there you go. I mean, there, when you look on Craigslist, if you know what you're trying to buy and you know the equipment that you're trying to get, Craigslist is a spectacular resource because you don't have to buy your veg and flour right now. You could buy your veg then start, you could buy your flour, dim it down, and then buy a veg later. All I'm suggesting is that, is that growing cannabis used to be super expensive. You used to have to go to a store, like when cannabis was $3,500 a pound, you could go to my store, and I, we were doing like 3,000, 3,500 a day when cannabis was 3,500 a pound. The equipment, like a, ba like a magnetic ballast was $200. We rarely saw used equipment because so few people grew and it required such a big initial investment. But now cannabis is $2,000 a pound and there are more people growing for themselves than ever before. So the type of customer that we've had has also changed. 
That's why we have lots of new T5s in the store and no used four foot eight bulb T5s. Because if I had a four foot eight bulb T5 in my store, it'd be gone by the end of the day. I mean, I'd sell it for 150 bucks versus 220 for a new one, but it'd be gone by the end of the day because everybody knows the value of a T5, whether that be for veg or flour. And while T5s did exist 30 years ago, most people 30 years ago were big growers because it was so illegal. So times have changed, and so has the attitude of growers and smokers and users, and it seems like everybody that votes for the people in government has changed their attitude, and yet the government hasn't seemed to change theirs. It always frustrates me how the government just does not reflect the will of the people. And I got a letter yesterday, I got an email yesterday from somebody telling me, oh, I know I read that one about that military thing. Yeah, I hate being emotional and getting all involved with, uh, with the shit, with uh, being emotional, but I got, I mean, like, yeah. Hey, girl boss, just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to also to say, because of your tutelage, I now have an LED light set and a few air stones with pumps that will be hitting the trash can. Ha 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 ha. I'm still a newbie to flowering, and this is my first harvest, not my first grow. Had a few of those before. Once, um, once I harvest this batch, then I'm expecting a home run. Knock it out of the park. Because you took the time for a pancreatic cancer su survivor. I want to buy from your store. Forget the part where they buy from my store. But here's somebody else. I mean, listen, as you get older, you lose some of the arrogance and you lose some of the indestructibility and you start to realize how fragile humans are and how important the relationships are that we make between other people. And I know I get bitched at for my attitude in my videos, and, but the videos are really one way. I'm not looking for feedback. They are a simplex form of communication where you need to hear what I have to say and I have no desire or need to hear what you have to say because I'm the one that sees a thousand growers a year in my store. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've been growing and slanging way longer than that. And so all I'm suggesting is that there are different ways to behave in different scenarios when I do my videos it's one way you guys are arrogant dumb stupid aggressive 18 to 49 year old males just like me and if I was quiet and timid and I seemed unsure oh you guys would eat me a fucking alive on the internet so what do I do I compensate because of that dumb stupid aggressive arrogant male and what I try to do is I try to make it such that my claims are forceful and undeniable and there's no way for you guys to argue with the math because it's solid i've been doing this for years i always remind myself of the father on uh what was olive on little miss sunshine he had like the seven step program to being like happy and successful so in a lot of ways i feel like i have to do that in my videos too because if you guys are in any way unsure about how sure i am about it Oh, you guys would turn me off and go back to the rest of the nonsense. I mean, look at all the nonsense. I, it took 50 years in this industry before my dumb ass put it into charts and graphs and qualified and quantified all of the data and took all of the customers that come through my store and collected and organized that data. Listen, I've read all the other books. I've read the Bible. I've read Cervantes and um, uh, Hippie uh, Hair Guy, Rosenthal and... And I, I've seen the book for life. And I'll tell you the same thing that I would tell any of those guys when I met them. The books have nothing to do with growing, my friend, because I own a hydro store. You do not need to teach somebody how to grow. If you grow a healthy plant, you could literally lightning strike a branch off. It will fall on the ground in a parking lot. It will root into a crack, stand itself back up without any help from anybody or anything has been for a long time. Why? Because that's what plants do. All of this stuff just accelerates the natural process. It intensifies it because when you grow indoors, you have more light and lights get closer. All right, let's take another call. Hey, you're on with the girl boss. What can I do for you? Hello? Girl boss! Oh my God, you're the biggest, you're the best girl boss. Oh, well, we'll try again with somebody else. So, 
That's my observation. Most of the time what I have to do for you guys is get you out of your own way. <clears throat> all the equipment works. It's all from, uh, it all works. I mean, everything in my store works and somebody will say everything in my store killed their shit too. You're on at the Grow Boss. What can I do for you? Uh, yes, sir. You just came up. I got a question for you. I uh, purchased your RO100 and uh, I uh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. No, it's okay. I'm waiting for you to tell me good Are news. Or yeah, I'm waiting for you to tell me good news or bad news. You're going to have to turn oh. your, is your computer on your phone? Is you got a speaker or something on? Yeah, that's why I got away from all of that so I could hear you better. Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> all right, I bought your R100, sir. Okay. And I saw your video. I bought it, what, about four or five months ago, and I put it together. It works great, except for the flow comes out slowly. I have it adjusted where it's a one-to-one -one where you said to put it at. Oh, yeah, ROs and are slow machines. I, uh, it's 100 gallons a day. So that's four gallons an hour. But on your video, okay. Go on. But on your video, you said that when it comes out of your uh, the first two filters, because I got the mineralizer on the top as well, that you said you you could split it into a Y to go through both at the same time and then come back together to go into your container. Is that correct, or am I looking at it wrong? Correct. You're you're correct you're looking at this wrong when you have a 100 gallon okay. when you have a 100 or a 150 and that's in this particular case when you have the thing with one top so you have one top you have a 100 or a 150 that's one membrane it goes through the membrane then it goes excuse me it goes through the membrane then it goes through the mineralizer now in a 200 okay. or a 300 there are two membranes and it splits into both of those and then it gets captured on the other side. So on the 100 and the 150, you do not have that. And on the 200 and the 300, you do. Okay. Uh, Cause I'm looking at it. Yeah, I have one, yeah, I got the two coming down and then I got the one, I got the two up on the top, like I said, I got what's because I got question? the, but what's the one the where question? you add in back in the PPMs. Okay, what's the question though? No, I was just wondering oh. because in the video that I saw, you were you were talking about coming out and whining the, uh, the the flow so it goes through both, or I think I was probably looking at it wrong. Yes, sir, because you're looking at one mineralizer and one membrane. In the other, in the video that you're talking about, I had two membranes. Yes. So oh, okay. You divide the incoming I water understand. amongst. You divide the incoming water between the two membranes, so they process twice as fast, and then you collect the water that comes out. Yes, sir. That's not the system you have. Okay. okay. Next question. Okay. Nope. That was it. Appreciate it, oh, Squirrel Boss. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for the call. Okay. So. We were talking about getting the right equipment for the space. We were talking about how this stuff back here um, intensifies an already natural process for people that are growing indoors um, and they have more light. I'm just suggesting that that they're, that it's tough to know the right equipment. And I, I've looked through all the other books <clears throat> and I can tell you when I say that everybody loves something in my store and everybody hates something in my store. I can tell you it's because they don't know how to grow when you hate a product because for the most part, it's all the same shit. But more importantly, I've read all the other books and they don't have anything to do with the problems that come in my store across the counter. I mean, I, I don't know where any of the other books and I, I've read as many as I could find before I wrote mine. I don't know where any of the other books give you information about a relationship between light and space. I've never read another book that you can open it up and it says, looks like this, then it's this. And I don't even need to open up my book. Like literally, like to show you the pictures. Like literally, I have 
So these were the fun fact cards that I include with the uh, stuff that I sell. And here's a troubleshooting guide. And normally I'd show it to you under my close-up cam, but as you can see, I don't have a close-up cam today. But there are only five problems that come through my store. Therefore, I should be able to determine what the five problems are, the five questions. Is it one leaf? If the answer is yes, most likely you have the start of a bug problem. Are the leaves, if the answer is no. The next question is, are the leaves clawed, puffy? Do they have speed bumps? If the answer is yes, you're overwatering. If the answer is no, we go on to the next question. And the next question is, are the leaves thin, drooping, and curled under? Well, if they look like that, that's too much light. But if the answer is no, is the plant stunted with yellowing tips or leaves? If the answer is yes, you have too many nutrients. If the answer is no, we go on to the final question. Is there any purpling, cupping, or folding of the leaves? And if the answer is yes, you've got a mag problem, whether it's from overwatering or not. Now I'll tell you, at a thousand customers a year for 10 years, the, the rare problem, like the caller earlier today, that you might have to work out the difference between silica oxide and, and microbes, a very, very small, tiny, tiny percentage of people that come through my store. That was literally the first time I had to look it up. So in 10,000 customers, for doing this for 10 years at 1,000 customers a year, you have to ask yourself, are you looking at a zebra in a herd of horses? Or are you looking at what the higher probability is and that it's horses? So and that's a paramedic thing where we talk about zebras and horses. I even wrote about that in my paramedic book. Like I ran a paramedic book as gangster. I, I, I was a paramedic and I was as gangster about being a paramedic as I am and, and arrogant about being a paramedic nurse as I was about growing. Oh, that might, book might be the most brutal book ever writ, wrote, written. That might be the most brutal book ever written. I didn't write it that way, but I was mad when I left that job. Woo! That was like, I spilled every secret about everybody about being a paramedic in the hospital and that thing. But I was trained specifically when you show up on a call. Are you looking for zebras or horses? Because the highest probability is a horse. So I always think in terms of determine the true nature of the problem and treat that. And most likely the true nature of the problem is always going to be something very common. That's why there's only five problems you really need to concern yourself with. Too much light, too much water, too many nutrients, spray for bugs, not enough mag in a healthy garden. Why? Because those are the horses in a herd of horses. That's an important thing to uh, that's an important thing to understand because it's easy to get distracted. I listen to other people. I, I've read a couple of posts in the past, like on forums, and I listen to how people help other people with their questions. Listen, I always ask the same fucking questions. How much light do you have? How much space do you have? How much canopy do you have? How much right? How often are you watering? I mean, there's only five problems. I should be able to get there with four questions because if it's not four, I, by definition, the fifth one's all that's left. And you know if they have a healthy garden, they don't have bugs. I'm just saying that it's pretty easy to know what's going wrong because there are so few things to this. And I've read the other books. My book's what? Like, my book's like 168 pages and probably 30 pages are advertising. And I still have more useful information than I think every other book combined. And definitely for 20 bucks, I definitely have more information than every other book per dollar. That's why when somebody in Canada like says or tries to intimate that they're complaining about the price, I just wanted to be clear that that guy from Canada made the statement that even at $70 with the cost of shipping, the book was more than worth it. And so there's no magic to growing cannabis. I hate growing cannabis. You guys try to call me out on comments on the videos about growing cannabis and how you want to see my grow. Oh my God. Growing cannabis is slow. It's painful. My face swells up the first eight days when they go into flower. The last thing my customers want me to do is grow dope and be hot at the store so I get watched. What I'm suggesting is, is that 
in all my shows and in all my books and in all my videos, when you watch the other forums and you listen to how they diagnose problems, those motherfuckers will tell you it's the strain. What the fuck? They'll tell you that you've got mold problems that come with the strain. They'll tell you you've got nutrient lockout, pH lockout. Oh my God, the shit that I see and hear with the bad information and the terrible advice. That's why you guys say, oh my God, the grow boss is dick. Oh my God, oh my God. Listen, the more you talk about me, the more books I sell. I sell more books than ever before. And when you look at the comments, I leave those grow boss as a dick comments up there because frankly, I sell so many books. The rare grow boss as a dick opinion is meaningless to me. Just like, just like not everybody loves everything in my store. Everybody blames something in my store for the death of their crops. Hey, one out of 10, one out of 100 can think the grow boss is a dick. We're not here to be friends. We're here because I have information that you want. And the best way that I can impart it upon you is with confidence and strength. So there's no doubt and there's no, listen, if you ask a girl out and she says, eh, maybe not right now, you and I both know what that means. That means continue hounding her until she says yes. <laughs> what it actually means is absolutely not and no, but dumb, stupid, aggressive male. So what do I hear is not necessarily what was said. That's why I'm clear about my choice of words and that's why when you read when i read your comments and i respond to them when you say dumb things i respond in a dumb way why because there's i mean hey grow boss what's the best system what the fuck do i know are you going for yourself you're trying to take over the world hydro soil what you know what i mean like you ask questions like that you should expect answers from me like that hey you're on with the grow boss what can i do for you apparently i'm in a mood today uh, hello Hey, I think you're going to have to turn your wife down. No, I'm just kidding, dude. You're on with the grow boss. What can I do for you? Hello. Um, I um, recently, um, I'm, I'm in flower right now. Okay. Probably like day, day 35. And I, I basically have um, a pretty even canopy, except I had one. One of the bigger uh, stems, it's growing really close to the light. So um, I ended up trying to super crop and, you know, kind of bend the um, the stem. Okay. And I'm kind of freaking out because I'm, I'm worried, you know, did I do it a little too late in flower? Um, I'm, I'm growing on the LED light and I got a scrog. Uh, it's a 300 watt LED light. But, uh, I mean, everything's looking great. Um, and the only other thing I have a problem with, it looks like the, the tips are starting to curl down, which I don't know if that was from me super crop, you know, from bending the stem and trying to, does that make sense? Yes, sir. But I I'll tell you something. Cannabis is a weed. You can pretty much ride over it with your bike and it'll just grow into two plants. Ever have one of those trees when you were a kid that somebody destroyed and it grew into like two trees? Listen, these things are resilient. And I would like to change the word that you used from super cropping to shaping. Because the word super cropping is a combination of lollipopping the bottoms, topping the tops, and shaping the plant such that it fits into a canopy. But you'll see I have a video coming up where there's one bud growing above the rest. I would have definitely said that before this bud got that far away from the canopy, this guy should have definitely pulled that bud down and into like two squares over, or one square over. Like he definitely should have kept that bud further from the light. Why? Because your light has to be above the, high, the tallest bud in the canopy or you're going to burn the tallest bud. And if you have the tallest bud in the canopy away from the rest of the canopy, then the rest of the canopy is going to get less light. There's, there's nothing you can, yes, listen, sir. this is a weed. You can pretty much kick it square in the nuts. It's female. So you can pretty much, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can Fair pretty enough. much uh, treat it, you know, poorly. <laughs> so you can pretty much treat this thing poorly and it will only respond better for you. 
So the, the suggestion that I would like to make to you is I don't believe that what you're doing in terms of shaping one top is going to affect the rest of the plant. So the question is, what PPM are you at? Um, I was just using the, uh, uh, like a normal bloom fertilizer. Okay. Um, that doesn't tell me PPM though. But, <laughs> uh, I, hold on. I have. I can For instance, tell you, right now, wait, you I don't even need to. Low, you don't even need to. Just here. answer. Just answer. Don't even care. Just answer this question. Are you using it the way the bottle suggests? Um. Actually, I have it. Uh, in case you want to know, I have it right here. It's a one three one. Are you using it the way the bottle suggests? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. How are you using it? Less I was, or more. Uh, I'm typically um, using it uh, two times um, um, every, I guess like every two or three days, I would use it like uh, two times I would fertilize and then one time I would, uh, the next time I would use water, just straight water. Okay, I want you to answer, and, um, listen, 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 I want you to answer a question for me. I, I'm gonna, I'm looking for as okay. short an answer as possible and I'm looking for a very specific answer okay. because you're going off on a tangent. Are you using the amount okay. that it says on the bottle to use? Um, I don't believe so. Are you using more or less? Um, I, I, would, I would say more. It, it says to use it, you know, every two weeks. No, 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 no. It says to use a certain amount. Are you using liquid oh, or you powder? Mean the liquid or powder? The uh, liquid. Liquid. What's the name of it? Um, it's, it is the, um, you know, I bought it at like Home Depot. It's organic bloom. Is by, there, uh, is there a name? organic bloom fertilizer? Um, no, man, I got a bunch of stuff that says, is it Dr. Earth organic bloom fertilizer? Uh, it's Estonia, E-S-P-O-M-A, organic bloom. I don't think it's organic, but you know, it it has been worked really well. My plant's been very healthy. It, but um, the the reason I I, I went for it um, because it said contained a total of um, colony farming units, and it has all these. I don't know, just I'm, okay. This is probably my so, second time growing. A couple of things here. One, I would like to point out that you don't put bicycle tires on a car. So, I would suggest that you go and buy hydroponic nutrients. You're going to buy something like from Humboldt Nutrient. You're going to buy something, GH Botanicare, Advanced Nutrients, House and Garden, Fox Farm, Mills Nutrient. Um, oh, my God, whatever. There's so I've many heard a psycho lot about Fox Farm. Oh, yeah, because it's all the same shit. Fox Farm does a lot of advertising, and they're one of the originals. So you're going to have to just get yourself a regular nutrient. But more importantly, you're going to have to pay attention to a couple of things. And I'm going to finish this call off the air but uh, for you. But in, the couple of things that you're going to have to deal with are going to be, you have no idea what PPMs you're feeding at. You're using more than this says, but you also could be having overwatering or overfeeding problems. And so I just want you to be aware that one of the things you're going to have to pay attention to is PPM. And as long as your pH is six or anywhere between five and seven, I don't care. But you're going to have to pay attention to PPM because you have a 300 watt light. It could be a 300 watt light or it could be like an LED that claims it's a 600 watt light. So you're going to have to be aware that of what, how much light you have because if you have a 600 watt light, you're going to be at 600 PPMs about week 10. About week six flower, you'll be at max light, max PPMs. If you have a 300 watt, like a 175 watt LED, that's like a 300 watt, then you're going to be at 300 PPMs in about week 10, four weeks veg, six weeks flower. So you're going to have to get hold of that PPM and you're going to have to understand it. And you're probably going to end up doing it on the 0.5 scale, which you'll figure out more about when you, uh, once you get your, once you get your, uh, your meter and of course i suggest the grow boss mega meter listen i calibrate these things and we put i buy them 
We calibrate them here at the store, by we I mean Chuck does, and we put Energizer batteries in it. That way you know exactly what you're getting. The same way I build my Ultimate RO, like the same way I literally buy them, I up build them and we upgrade them to be more appropriate for what our industry needs. Listen, I'll tell you a secret about meters. The same way I tell you a secret about the grow books out there and the same way I tell you the secret about LEDs, I'm gonna tell you that the more money you spend on a meter, the faster it dies. I don't know how the universe does that, but I have given up selling Oakton, Hanna, and uh, Blue Lab. I, I couldn't keep up with the returns. I couldn't keep up the amount of money I made off selling the name brand meters like HM Digital. The amount of money I lost in my store selling those meters was insane. It was so insane that I literally went out, bought 10 different meters and used them all until we had three left. And then I picked the one that worked best. I mean, I bought all of the cheap meters that you see on eBay. I bought everything. And what I found was those, oh, everyone's gonna hate me for this. What I found was, uh, dude, digital meters. What I found was, uh, oh yeah, never buy one of these soil things. They're absolute nonsense. See this meter right here? Oh, that's Milwaukee. That's a, that's, that's a nice company. Now let's, uh, I like that company. Now, these meters are generally like five, six, seven bucks. These piece of shit five, six, seven bucks, meter, five, six, seven dollar meters, I will tell you after selling a huge, quant thousands of meters, I will tell you that these motherfuckers last as long as the battery and I sell them for 20 bucks and they last as long as the battery. I got so tired of selling expensive meters that died and I had to return them. Listen, if I sell a meter for 80 bucks, I make 25. If I have to return one, it costs me $20 to take the time out of my day, send it back and return it. I literally would make $5 off selling a meter and then I had to sell a second one. And that second one, more often than not, just like the first one, fucking died. I lost so much money selling meters that I would rather sell one of these POS meters for $20 and make 10 than have those expensive meters come back to my store. I don't even stock them anymore. I don't even know what to say about them anymore. They're just, some of those meters are these cheap ass meters repackaged in a nice little plastic hangy thing. So what I did was I found the best meter with the least returns, the Mega Meter, the Grow Boss Mega Meter, like literally, um, like literally the Grow Boss Mega Meter for $79 and six in shipping. I probably get one out of a hundred come back, if that. In fact, we've been selling them so long now, we've been selling replacement probes for them. I gotta tell you, there is a small profit margin on meters. And, and I don't know who's making the money, maybe it's the companies, maybe it's the distributors, but I could tell you, I was not making the money because they just kept dying and dying. And you wouldn't know it because you might buy one meter or two and you might think, oh my God, the pH and PPM is so critical to know. But the reality is working in a hydro store and the more you listen to the show, you're going to realize that not one of my answers ever blames the genetics. You don't have mold and mildew. That guy who called earlier, he didn't have mold and mildew and slimy roots because of the genetics. So as soon as somebody tells you pH lockout, it's the genetics, nutrient lockout. As soon as somebody tells you any of those things, just write off their advice because I have never, that's not quite true. Rarely do I tell people it's pH lockout. 
I usually tell piggies that burp in my face and man bear pigs that come through my store and the stinky piggies, I'll look you right in the face and tell you, oh, yeah, I'll agree with you. Oh, yeah, it's probably your pH. You should do 6.2 instead of 6.1. 6.2 instead of 6.3. Oh, yeah, kick rocks. Get the fuck out of the store because you stink and you're a pig. But if you come in and you're really going to ask me and you're really going to learn, I mean, it tells you right there on, like, literally page five of my book, pH lockout does not exist. Your water in a hydro system will evaporate and your plants will dehydrate and die before you ever kill them from pH lockout. I've never had a real problem in the 10 years that I've been doing this and all the consults that I do. I have never had a problem where I've had to answer somebody, you need to switch genetics or that's pH lockout or you have nutrient lockout. I never say these things. And when I look at, when I, before I even wrote the book, when I was first starting to grow, I looked at the forums and I looked at all the data. It really, I mean, I didn't put the grow book together until I started to see thousands of growers. And it occurred to me like by day three that I bought my store, like day three, ah, there's no information out there that has anything to do with what we do in a hydro store. And I've read all the books. I've seen them. They are 100% have nothing to do with the problems that come through my store. Nothing. Now, is there information about cannabis in there? Yes. Is there information about growing cannabis in there? No. All right, listen, I'm going to do, I'm going to run this show a little long. I've got, hey, 931. If it hangs up on you, call back in one sec. Give me one minute to take a break and uh, I will be right back. Okay, I had to take a little bit of a break. I'm back from that. Um, the store opens at 11, so I don't got any customers outside. It's 10.30 right now. Oh man, I'm probably just gonna piss off all of the customers and all the manufacturers. Well, maybe not all the manufacturers, just the ones I don't care about. Because the products that you see behind me, the green pads, Humboldt Nutrients, Clonex, Myco Chum from Great White, plant success whether you're transplanting and you've got their jellyfish or you're using their microbes or you're going from into big buckets and you're transplanting them the mondi humidity domes because you got to know the humidity of your cuttings these are real products i mean you need to know the humidity of your cuttings right i mean under the dome so i mean that's a real product this isn't a promise it's not a temptation it's none of those things that's a real product that you're really gonna have to use okay let me get on to this this is another call Okay. Okay, I'll turn. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'll turn my TV down, and now we're good. What can I do for you? You're on with the girl boss. Hey, yeah, you know what? You are one funny dude. I listen every weekend, and you, you just make me laugh. Hey, my question is: Thank you. Are you listening? Yes, sir. I was absorbing the call. Um. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You write about the books. I bought all the books. And everybody never explained it as simply as you do. It's a simple, common-sense approach. I love how you, you know, how you teach. But my question is, you talk about starting off, like, I, I got a 400-watt light. If I start at 200 in veg, and I'm, and I'm seven-week veg, two-week flower, if, when do whoa, I flip whoa, it whoa, to the 400? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Say that again? You're a what? When do I, I'm at a 400 watt, I got a 400 watt light. So I started my veg and flower it with 200. I'm at seven week veg, two week flower. Oh, and two I, I ran 200 watts, so 50% of my 400 watts. Okay, but you're my, two... my, my thing is, when do I flip it to 400? Like, how do you know <laughs> when to flip it? Okay, 
So there's a couple of components to this. First, let me say I totally appreciate the compliments. Second, when we talk about... Thank you. Yes, sir. When we talk about how to, when and how to flip your lights, what I'm going to assume is that you're two weeks into flower with a seven-week veg. So it's probably... Yes, and I'm still at 100 watts. I'm still at 200 watts. I want to know when do I kick it up? Like you said, you hold off and don't, you, you got to have, you have your wattage at the end for flower. When do I know when to f do that? Okay. So there's a couple of ways to handle it. Because going from 200 to 400, that's a doubling of light. Now I'm going to assume that everything else is 100% okay. You have enough plants, you have enough canopy. You don't have any complaints other than this one question. And so it's awesome. I learned from you. I did the trellises. I got them in each square. It's. I did. I cut down reading what everybody's chart says on the fertilizer, and I use my PPM meter. I'm at. Get this, grow boss. I'm at nine ninety nine on the PPM runoff, and I put. I put five hundred fifty in, so I got four fifty extra. Uh, anyway, go ahead. Uh, you were going to help me with the wind to flip it to the full power. Sorry. Okay, so I'm excited. <laughs> what we're talking about is is there's two ways to shift gears when you go from veg into flower. And I use this yes, as sir. the example. I don't care what week you fuck up in. <clears throat> if you fuck up in week one, your buds are going to get too big by week 12 and run into the light. And if you fuck up in week 12, your buds are going to run into the light and burn. It doesn't matter when you fuck up. That said, you always want to grow veg a little too big. Because if you don't put enough canopy into flower, you're never going to get the buds later. So, you've got the space covered, you've got the canopy covered. What you need to do now is there's a relationship. Because if you do 400 at 3 feet, it might be a little close. But let's say you do 400 at 4 feet. And then in two weeks, you lower it to 400 at three and a half feet. So you can not only play. Well, boss. Yes, sir. I, I'm, I got a two by six foot closet, seven and a half foot tall. And I've been doing 12 inches from the canopy for seven grows. And I, I was moving it by hand every other day last grow so I and that's why I, I learned about light mover through your video and I got a light mover so I got two lights in that space of two by six by seven and a half foot tall and uh, when you talk about three feet I, um uh, there's no more there's no room to be three feet now where my canopy is I wanted to tell you though last grow without a light mover I did 24.67 ounces with two 400 watt lights in that two by six space i'm not kidding and it, it, it but you know what the, the leaves were yellowing and this is the first grow following your start with 100 ppm and every week add a little ppm i the leaves are green i mean it's unbelievable beautiful plant there's no yellowing i got no crisp but i even got the beautiful dew on the leaves from so that means the water's going to the leaf. It's just fantastic. So thank you. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> I'd like to suggest that it actually means that you're doing everything right. I'd also like to take a thank moment you. and point out that you said you had two 400s. I believe we started the conversation yes, with one 400, and you said 24 ounces. And usually what I tell you guys is that you get a half pound from a 400-watt light. That's eight ounces. You... God, you have almost a thousand watts worth of light. Now at 800 watts, that would be 16 ounces. You got 24. When I say on average, that means that some people get more. So some people get four, some people get 12. Who's the people that get 12? Those are the good growers. So here's a guy who's getting above average. Why? Because he's doing it right. Here's a guy who gets a pound and a half from two 400 watt lights. True story, girl boss. You know what? When I heard that you said you could get 25% more, I'm going to do two pounds in a two by six space with two 400, 400 watt lights. I'm going to do it, and I'll send you pictures when I'm when I'm done to prove it. But it's all it. It took everything that I learned for three years, and never made sense till I started watching your videos. 
and you put it, like you said, the paramedic, you put stuff in the perfect, simple, shut up, you don't burp in my face, you start low on the PPM, start low on the light, and build up until you're old, they get old enough to handle more light and more PPM. It's, oh, I want to tell you about the PPM. If, should I concentrate on that runoff PPM more than what I'm putting in? Like I'm at 990 on week two of flowers, seven week veg, so nine weeks growing. Should I be nine? Should I use the runoff as my guide to how much I add in? <coughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. The answer is no. Yes. Well, sorry. Okay. And here's what I mean by that. There's a couple of things, and one of them is you have to fly the plant. You know, you watch yes, those sir. airplane crash videos, and the lesson that I seem to learn from all of those airplane crash things on, like, Netflix, and from all of the patients that I ran as being a paramedic, you don't need to look at the monitor. The monitor is only there to confirm what you already suspect. Set the flaps yes. to 3 degrees, set the power to 85%, fly the airplane, solve the problem. So before I even suggest that you... Yes, no, maybe so, look at the PPM of the runoff. Something you may want to consider is look at the plant first. It's perfect. Then it's you, perfect. Then, it's green. Then don't add a factor like runoff in. Well, my, my question is, like, I had 999 on the runoff. After I vacuumed up, I, I, you, you know what's interesting, Grow Boss? I was five gallon plastic pots last grow, and I upped it with the light mover to 10 gallon fabric pots. And it, it, I, I, instead of watering every two days, and now it's every four or five, so I love the less work with the bigger pot. And my thinking is because you, you taught me something that, like, feed water, water, water. Maybe it, should I. I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the flower and like not getting enough. If I just put water in now, because I don't water it for every four or five days, I was a little worried about not giving enough newts. Should I just give a water to flush it and then check the PPM if it drops down? And, you know what I'm saying. And big breath. I can hear you taking a big breath. Okay. Yes, I understand what you're saying. So first off, let's remove the runoff because that's not nearly as accurate as the water that you're feeding with. Because the runoff contains yes, whatever's in the media as well. So, let's right. let's look at this from a different perspective. The plants look good. You're at, you're at week seven and 500 PPM. Let's ask the question, now that you've told me that you're watering every four days, are you feeding every four days, every watering? Yes. And what dictates that, boss, is the PPM runoff. Because I know if it starts creeping up higher than being 300 different from when I'm putting in, it's too much salt build up. You taught me that. Okay. As long as it's, it's not too much salt drawn from the plant, then I know I'm good. <clears throat> okay, so we know that if there's more runoff, more PPMs in the runoff, it could be that the, that the plant is not using everything you're watering with. In that case, yes, sir. what you would do is you would feed every other time the same PPM, but you would feed it half as frequently because there's really two components to PPMs. One component is how often, and the other component is how much. Because frankly, I don't care if you feed, a, if the plant wants 250, you could feed 1,000 and then water, 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 and then feed 1,000 again because 1,000 divided by four is 250. I wouldn't suggest that you feed... Between what... Sorry? You say that between what... What's the time limit? You say it like... You can't do that in a year... A year calendar time. You say like 250 and a water, 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 250. No, no, no. I said... I'm, I'm, I said if your plant wants 250, I don't care if you gotcha. do 250 every time. Or you can do 1,000... Once every four times. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, and, that's and awesome. Okay. Now and now what? And now you've just taken a step into a larger universe. I was watching Star Wars last night. So, and and now yeah. now that you know, and now that you know that there is a concentration and a frequency. When you look at the back of all the manufacturer bottles, or you read like on the back of. 
the humble nutrient bottles. They talk about what to do week by week. I sell a lot of these at the store because uh, super easy. The Humboldt Nutrients has one, two, and three part. But when you look at the back of the bottles, they really are telling you week by week. Now you have to understand that this bottle and all nutrient bottles are based on a 10 plant, four week veg, eight week flower, thousand watt garden, where they start in a one and they finish in a five. So if you, let's yeah. say you have a four week veg, eight week flower, you start in a one and finish in a five. If you have a 400 watt light, you need to use 66% less of this. You know what, let me tell you, the greatest thing was learning from you is throw away any chart that any nutrient company ever gives and just use a PPM, your, your mega meter, read your PPM that you put in. You don't have to worry about any quantity of water. You don't have to say five gallons, I got it to five millimeters times five gallons, 20. No, you just add it to your PPM meter, tells you where to be, and you add it. It's a simple, <laughs> awesome program you're on, bro, boss. I'm telling you, you're, you're like the greatest uh, grower of cannabis, knowledge giver that's out there. I, I, I'll take it, bro. I appreciate that so much. And you know what? And I You're awesome, boss. I totally appreciate those compliments. Um, you know, it's, it's tough to hear. I mean, like, you know, you hear those kind of compliments and you're like, me? But especially when I tell you guys, like, I hate growing. Oh, my God. It's slow. It's painful. It takes fucking forever. It's so much work. And the first eight days of flower, my eyes swell up and my face turns red. Oh my God. Ha. And I, and I sold and I grew and I did everything I was not supposed to when I was younger. And you know, I look back now and I'm like, all of these mistakes that you guys call in, I made every one of them. You know what I mean? Like I will look at the camera and I will tell you, I am a builder. Dude, you look at my store, you look at look at all this you shit dude i'm like the salvation army of hydro stores uh, literally if my store doesn't buy the equipment from you used you might as well throw it away because no other store is going to buy it from you i'm like i'm like the the reloading store like the gun supply store with with the rows of shit where only the owner knows where everything is and he pulls some shit out from way back in 19 78 that it's just the thing that you needed ah uh, one of the things that i am proud of myself and my store for though is that i have all the parts and pieces you need to build the stuff i've got the shut off valves and the t's and the connectors and that's why when you look at like my uh gardens and grow rooms book you'll see that i have full shopping lists of everything that goes along with this. Why? Because I built every system wrong four times, so I know how to build them all right now. I go over how to truly use, like Sentinel controllers, like these things right here, like these Sentinel controllers. Like, there's a, a huge problem with what comes through my store and how people use them because you guys miss the point. And that's why I always come down to. When I look at the, when I, when I look at the forums and I read the books, the reality has little to do with what's being answered in the other books and the products being sold in our market. Does it make me a heretic? Yeah. Does it make me a pariah? I suppose. Am I breaking down and ripping apart the entrenched dogma? Hell yes. And that's why you guys say I'm a dick because you want to believe what you want to believe. And all I'm doing is telling you the reality from a guy who works behind the counter in a hydro store. In a hydro store. I mean, there's my hydro store stacks of shit piles of used right i mean look at this used stuff i go over it with you guys all the time and all in all my videos why because the reality of growing cannabis it's nothing to do with what any of you guys think it does and if you think i'm wrong spend a day behind the counter in my store with people burping on you oh i can't believe that i hey dude i can't believe that after all of this i'm going to be known as the guy who said i hate it when customers burp on me this is real boss what can i do for you oh wait 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 it says i'm on mute okay hey this is the grow boss what can i do for you 
Hey, how you doing? Hey. Hey, I, I love your videos, man. They're they're awesome. I just had a couple of questions for you. Um, your mic went out earlier, and you were actually talking about a really interesting, uh, really, a uh, topic about the uh, the great white micro. Ah, oh, fuck! I hate. It. I'm still learning how to use the equipment. You know how it is. You're a grower. You know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I'm a I do the building thing too. I have, a, I have a quick question for you though. Um, do, is it okay? I mean. You, you read so much conflicting stuff, and you say it all the time. So uh, this is one of those conflicting things that I see, and I can never get a definite answer on. With, with Great White, if you use it into a reservoir with a tank, um, you know, like a 55-gallon, and it's in a hydroponic system, is, is the Great White micro going to survive inside the tank, or is it only going to attach to the roots and live there? Okay, interesting question, and you are correct. Let's, I'd like to change one word for you, though. And the one word I'd like Absolutely. to is is tank. Are when you say tank, are we talking about a res? But let, yeah, well, let's let's say barrel. Okay, so you <laughs> let's have a reservoir. A res tank. Don't, uh, even, don't even care. You have yeah. a reservoir of water that you pump in and out of a reservoir. And what are you pumping it onto? A tray? Uh, it's into a ebb and flow. It goes into oh. a, I believe, a three-gallon controller, and then it bleeds out. What's the okay? What's the name of the? What kind of a system you said? It, like, what's the? Which one is it? There's a. It's a, it's a CPP or a CPA. It's the 55 gallon res with, um, I believe they're two gallon pots and they're all hooked up to it. You get about a, uh, 12 or 24 of them. What color is it? Black. Okay, so like the old cap controller. Okay, I just want to put it up. Yeah. Ebony. That's awesome. I'm going to get into something else about that, too. Go ahead with that. Powder. Is that a, what is it, the one that starts with an O with the dot or the whale on it? Uh, what is it, or? Is it, it's an or, Oracle, I want to say, or, or I don't know. It's one of their newer ones, right? <sighs> don't you have it right next to you in the bottle? Ah, man, it slips my mind. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not on the computer right now. <laughs> And that will survive into the
that's a great story. Was that were you describing the um, the the, uh, the way that it helps to aid um, with the nutrient take up? Oh no no I got that you you gave me a ton of information that was just my that was my my follow up question with that um my that was that was great thank you um my next question is I also use a fulvic acid um, I believe it's a bio AG full power now when you use this is this feeding the microbes okay no problem that's okay. So you do have the sugar inside the, the the hydroponics in order for it to survive or thrive? Is that for soil though? That's an awesome explanation. Thank you. That's great. I have... Okay. Oh, fuck. I think my mic was off for that. Fuck. Oh, God. you did it again. I think you heard me, but no, not everybody else. No, that was such else. a good topic. Fuck. Yeah, that was a good topic, man. This is why people have... <laughs> this is why people have engine. You know, my mic doesn't blink in front of me when it's on. All right, send me an email and I'll send you something... Fuck. That was the best ever speech on microbes. I think I just f myself in the A again. You know, the problem is the equipment, right? So if I dim my mic, see that little light right there? It doesn't, I mean, it doesn't tell me that it's on mute. It doesn't tell me. Mm, 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 mm. That super sucks. God, I get so bored and so frustrated. All right, it's time to end the show. I promise I will do even better next week. 
It says as you're literally watching me learn how to do a show like you guys are learning how to grow and there's no point denying it, right? Like, I mean, it is what it is. So who are my sponsors? We got Humboldt Nutrients Green Pad. We got Clonex, right? Rooting Gel, Clonex Mist for your clones. The Mega Meter, Green Pad, Plant Success, Mondi Thermo Flow, Turbo Clone. If you want to pick up one of these shirts, you can. I'm the Grow Boss. I guess I'm going to end the show super bummed again. All right, thanks so much, guys.